Hello and welcome. I'm very happy you found your way here. First of all, if you don't know me, my name is Valerie. I'm a registered nurse, certified health coach, and osteoarthritis wellness specialist. I have had osteoarthritis for over 20 years and have made it my mission to beat it so I can continue doing the things that I love to do. I have done much research over the past few years and have applied what I have learned to my own life. And in doing so, I have seen a vast improvement in my joint pain, other osteoarthritis symptoms, and general wellness. I am inspired to share what I have learned with others. I am shocked and saddened by how much information there is throughout the internet about osteoarthritis that is outdated and false. The vast majority of information that is on the internet about osteoarthritis is based on old science that has been disproven over the past 20 years or so. So many seemingly reputable sources still give out wrong information and probably don't know any better because they have not bothered to update their knowledge. They are the experts and are pretty confident they know what they know. The truth is, if you dive into the most recent scientific research, it is easy to discover that scientists have done a 180 degree turn on osteoarthritis and know that it is not what we once thought it was. I am so fortunate to have the education and professional experience to have been able to find out the truth for myself. And I have been able to turn my osteoarthritis around from having a knee that would painfully lock up in the night to being able to hike and rock climb with very little to no pain. Let's start with the basics. Osteoarthritis is one of the most common musculoskeletal conditions. It is the most common form of arthritis and is a leading cause of disability worldwide. It does often get swept under the carpet and is erroneously seen as a normal part of aging. That is a myth. Many medical providers do not view it as serious and there is really little they can do about it. So they kind of ignore it. A lot of providers would just say that it's just aches and pains and all you can do is tolerate it until you are bad enough or old enough to qualify for a joint replacement. Osteoarthritis is often seen as the better type of arthritis, even though it has a disease burden similar to rheumatoid arthritis and does not have any disease modifying agents like RA and most other forms of auto autoimmune arthritis do. Many osteoarthritis experts agree that it is a medically underserved condition. What does a diagnosis of osteoarthritis not mean? It doesn't mean your joint has worn down, that you need a joint replacement, or even that you are destined for a joint replacement. This is the greatest myth or misconception about osteoarthritis, and it is everywhere. Even extremely reputable sources are still spitting out that old, outdated information. Osteoarthritis is not a degenerative disease. Bone on bone and wear and tear are false, misleading, and harmful terms. It makes it seem that OA is just due to aging, which is simply not true. Only 40% of people will ever have OA in their life. So why are their joints wearing down and not the other 60%? Because there are much more complex processes going on than just wear and tear. These terms that imply it's just wear and tear are very harmful to people with osteoarthritis. It leads to feelings of hopelessness and despair in a sense that there is nothing to do but just grin and bear it. It also gives your doctor and other healthcare providers the sense that there is nothing that can be done, which is very damaging. Luckily, the news is starting to get out. Over the past year, I've attended several conferences and have seen a surge in correct information being put out on the internet and other media sources. I also wanna clarify that osteoarthritis is not autoimmune. Autoimmune arthritis includes those like rheumatoid and psoriatic. In these types of arthritis, something triggers the immune system to begin attacking normal healthy tissues in the body but a type of white blood cell called a T cell starts to attack normal tissues. And in the case of RA, it starts to attack the lining of the joint capsule. It's more of a sensitivity response. In osteoarthritis, the joint is still attacked by the body, but in an inflammatory way rather than in a re immune response way. Yes, inflammation is part of the immune response, but it is different from an autoimmune response. 
Also important to know is that the inflammation occurs in all the joint tissues and structures, not just the cartilage. The entire joint is affected by osteoarthritis inflammation. Ultimately, it is this inflammation that leads to the breakdown of joint tissues, not wear and tear. Osteoarthritis is much more complicated than that. Many factors can cause osteoarthritis and many factors can make it feel worse and cause it to progress. The main theory is that there is a trigger, so like an injury or um, too much stress to the joint or a malalignment. Then systemic inflammation kicks in and can take over. The joint tries to fight back, but it is often a losing battle if the triggers or the source of systemic inflammation is not taken away or at least subdued. In the osteoarthritic joint, cells called macrophages move into the joint in response to a trigger and release pro-inflammatory chemicals which attract other cells into the joint, and they alter the normal maintenance of the joint tissues, all the joint tissues. The active inflammation causes breakdown to occur due to the release of these inflammatory chemicals changing the metabolism of the joint. In a normal joint, there is a constant breakdown and repair of joint cartilage. In osteoarthritis, this becomes imbalanced and more breakdown occurs and less repair occurs. This occurs because of signaling by pro-inflammatory chemicals. All of this has been discovered over the past 20 or so years. There is some good news that they are right now trying to develop drugs that will block the specific type of inflammation that occurs in osteoarthritis, but we are not quite there yet. It is complicated because there are many different inflammatory cytokines and chemokines that get invited to the party. So far, agents that block just one cytokine have been ineffective and NSAIDs that are more like anti-inflammatory uh, generalists are more effective. The most common symptom of osteoarthritis is pain. It can vary from slight to severely limiting. Most common sites are the knee, hands, hips, but it can occur in any joint and it can also occur in multiple joints. Most of the pain in osteoarthritis is caused by inflammatory chemicals. I realize that this is somewhat difficult to understand, but most pain in the body is caused by biochemicals moving along nerve cells and eventually to the spinal cord and brain. In addition to pain, osteoarthritis can also cause joint stiffness, joint swelling, joint creaking, cracking, or grinding, and also affect function. Osteoarthritis can lead to sleep disruption, fatigue, altered mood, muscle weakness, decreased mobility, and pain sensitization. So this means you actually get more sensitive to pain. Again, this is all due to pro-inflammatory chemical imbalance. Another big myth out there, both among the general population and the medical community, is that a diagnosis of osteoarthritis is made based on an x-ray. Cartilage does not show up in an x-ray, so an x-ray will only show when enough cartilage has been lost that the space in the joint begins to narrow. An x-ray also does not show what is going on with the other joint tissues. X-ray changes do not occur until later in the disease. Someone can have very little cartilage loss, but other tissues can be irritated and inflamed, and pro-inflammatory chemicals can be shooting off pain signals. It goes the other way, too. Treatment should be made based on symptoms, not x-rays. And I see this quite often. Someone has an x-ray for some other reason, and then they're told, oh, by the way, you have some arthritis in that joint. And then guess what? pain develops and the person limits activity and it snowballs from there. I do understand that uh, being told you have osteoarthritis can make you feel broken and the pain that suddenly develops is protective. Everything in the body is connected and our mindset plays a major role in how much pain we experience. I am just diving into that now and the research is impressive. More on that in later videos. X-rays and osteoarthritis symptoms are poorly connected. Diagnosis can be made based on physical exam alone. 
unfortunately, most doctors are not comfortable diagnosing and treating osteoarthritis. So what happens a lot of the time is a general practitioner or a primary care doctor will refer you to a specialist. And really, there is no specialist for osteoarthritis except the orthopedic surgeon. And this probably is why joint replacements and other types of surgery are often done much too often and much too soon. Not everybody who is diagnosed with osteoarthritis will progress, and those who do progress can progress very differently. So asking someone else how their osteoarthritis has progressed is a very poor way to predict how your osteoarthritis will progress. Another thing that is not too well known about osteoarthritis is that flares can occur if inflammation suddenly increases in the body. A lot of people think that flares are something that occurs with the only with the autoimmune arthritis, but flares can occur with osteoarthritis. An increase in inflammation in the body can translate to an increase in inflammation in the affected joint, which will increase pain and other symptoms. There is currently no cure for osteoarthritis and no medicines that can modify the disease or slow it. Lifestyle changes really are the best way we have to improve osteoarthritis symptoms and slow the progression. I spent a lot of time research researching this and organizing what I have found into a specific action plan. It comes down to five main actions. First, expand your knowledge. Knowing more about what is going on in the body with osteoarthritis can really help with understanding and making better choices. Knowledge also helps with mindset about osteoarthritis because once you are clear on the truth about what is causing your symptoms, it will seem much more manageable. Second, you wanna fight inflammation through lifestyle changes. An inflammation-fighting eating pattern, hydration, weight management, stress management, and prioritizing sleep can all help to lower the amount of those chemicals in the body that's causing cartilage to break down and causing pain. Third, you want to maximize movement. Studies have shown that pain can completely resolve with just physical activity. Physical activity is important to strengthen muscles and strong muscles protect the joint when you are using it. Building strength and balance allows you to use your joints more safely. Additionally, movement brings anti-inflammatory mediators and restorative substances into the joint and removes pro-inflammatory waste products. Fourth, you wanna optimize your mindset. The right mindset is so important. Developing the right mindset helps with making the changes necessary to improve symptoms, but a positive mindset is actually directly associated with less pain. Finally, and this is especially important for those who have had pain for a while, you need to retrain your pain. I mentioned before that pain sensitization is a symptom of osteoarthritis. So this is like your pain control knob has been turned to high and now it's stuck there. There are proven ways to turn that knob back down if that is what is needed. That is all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave your comments or questions below. Please like and subscribe to see more cutting edge information about osteoarthritis. I will also provide social media links so you can follow me there and a link to a sign up page to receive updates on my soon to be released wellness program designed especially for people with osteoarthritis. I hope to see you soon. Bye. Thank you.